I'm going to show you how to get some amazing photorealistic images just like these out of your stable diffusion setup right there locally on your own PC. Let's jump right into it. If you spend any time with stable diffusion and building AI generated images, you know that getting that aesthetic that you're looking for, a little bit of photorealism can be really tricky and difficult. A lot of the tools out there are paid. I'm going to show you how to do this right there on your own Windows PC at home with a completely free tool. And in fact, I've got this video up here that will show you how to set that up in one click. Now there are kind of two key tricks to making this work. The first is your prompt. Your prompts matter so much when you're creating AI generated images. And it's not only just the prompt, it's also your negative prompt, the things that you don't want to have inside of there. That's what tells the neural network, the artificial intelligence, what should be included in the image and what should not. So you can think of this as the guide rails that it uses to determine how to build the image that you want to represent. The second piece of this is actually the model that it was trained on. You have different versions, Stable Diffusion 1.4, 1.5, 2.1, and they were trained on different data sets of images. Now the really cool part here is you can take those base data sets, say Stable Diffusion 1.5, and you can layer additional images on top of it to have a specific aesthetic that you're going for, and that's gonna change the output that you get from the model. The cool thing is other people have already done this work. Let me show you. To start this, we're gonna jump over to a website called civetai.com. CivetAI has a number of different checkpoint models you can download for free, and these have different aesthetics. They were trained on different image sets. So what you can do is kind of just scroll through the website, find a look that you're looking for, and then download that file. In my case, one I found that was really cool to me was this stably diffused wild mix. And if you look through it, it has some really cool aesthetic. A lot of those really bright colors, a lot of like RPG. It's just a really nice aesthetic. It has that also that high contrast, that, that look that you get from systems like Midjourney and Lexica. All you have to do is go up here to the upper right hand corner and you download, download the latest 1.99 gigabytes. That's the file that you're gonna want here. Now download that to a directory that you can access with Invoke AI. And we're gonna jump right over into that UI next. Now again, if you haven't installed this already, I've got a tutorial on how to do that simply and easily. But for this, I'm gonna assume that you've already got this installed. What you do once you get in here is you go up to the model manager. You click on this icon, and it's gonna show a list of available models and you're gonna click add new, add checkpoint safe tensor model, and then give it the path to the folder that you downloaded that checkpoint file to. Once you do that, you can click this refresh button. It's gonna scan the directory and it's gonna give you a list of all the models that you have available. So in our case, find the one that you're looking for and go ahead and click on it. Once you do that, you can close this window and you can see that it gives you a list of the checkpoint files over here, and you can simply click on load for the one that you wanna have active, the one that you actually want loaded in and being actively used. In our case, stably diffused wild. You can verify up here in the dropdown that the correct model is actually loaded, and then we can jump right in and start actually generating some images. Now, I'm not only gonna show you these images, I'm gonna show you the prompts that were used to create these, and then I'm gonna show you some variations that you can do based on just some minor changes to the prompts. This is all to help you generate better, higher quality images. So we can take a look at a couple of these images and you can see they're highly photorealistic. Now, if you go up here, right above the image, you can see these little quotes, that's the prompt. So you can find fully bikini, beautiful girl, floats underwater, open mouth with flowing hair. So you can see the, the positive prompt and then you can also see the negative prompt that was used down here deformed, bad anatomy, poorly drawn face, etc. So using that, you simply click invoke and it's gonna generate a new image based on those parameters. And it should be something relatively similar to the image we just saw based on the same prompt. And you see, again, very highly detailed, just a beautiful photo overall. We're gonna go ahead and delete that one. Similarly, you can do the same thing with animals. It's not just beautiful women, this is actually being used for landscapes, cars, animals, you name it. So we've got a couple of really cool pictures of cats here and we can pull up the prompt. And this is a much simpler prompt, a cute kitten made out of metal, cyborg detailed. So this one was interesting because when I copied this prompt from the website, there are a couple things you actually have to change. And you'll notice this in the disclaimer down here. Sometimes, and you need to read this on the different websites that you're using, 
the syntax of the prompt will either be invoke AI, it might be automatic 1111, it might even be mid journey. The syntax changes based on which system you're using. So if somebody has a plus in their prompt, that's the same equivalency of you using brackets. If someone has plus plus, it's the same as double brackets. You'll also see some people use other types of delimiters. And if you're not getting the same result that that person got using the same prompt, it might be the reason. So you can see that this has a few of these instances in it. So this should actually have a plus. This should have a plus after it. We'll take off the intricate details and this should actually make a difference. So we'll pull this up and we'll see if we get a slightly different result. We do, definitely. It's a metallic cat. It's pretty interesting. All right, for this next image, we're gonna take a look at this beautiful picture of a woman. This had the same issues as the one before it. When I first copied the prompt from the website, it had a bunch of brackets and such that just simply aren't recognized by Invoke AI. Once I removed those, I started getting the results that you would expect, and it's pretty much repeatable almost every time. You can see you get really highly detailed kitchen in the background. You get this nice, lovely aesthetic and a beautiful photorealistic face. Now, this one's really interesting because by just changing a couple of the keywords in the prompt, you can get vastly different results. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll go ahead and invoke this and we should get back a very similar aesthetic to that last image. And as you can see, we do. That's beautiful. It's very high quality, very high resolution. The thing is, you can come in here and you can change just small keywords. You could say, I want a 60-year-old instead of 20-year-old. Invoke that, and it should come back with an older woman in the same style of photo. Amazing. And you can see it's still the same high quality, that same cyberpunk aesthetic. Now, what you can do is you can say, okay, instead of a future cyberpunk city, you can just say, in a city. So now we'll get a 60-year-old woman in a city. We'll go ahead and invoke that one. Now let's change the city background. We can go a little bit further and we can take out futuristic and sci-fi. And let's say we want a 30 year old woman. Go ahead and invoke that. And we should get back an entirely different aesthetic. Now this still has that cyberpunk aesthetic. And if you'll notice, I missed one of the keywords here. So we took out all the sci-fi and the futuristic words, but we didn't take out cyberpunk. So let's go ahead and remove that and invoke this one more time to see what it comes back with. Now I'm guessing this won't be so futuristic looking. Now you get a photorealistic woman and it looks like a photo shoot with that nice bokeh in the background, that depth of field that you would expect from a real image. Now what if we wanted to take this image and we wanted to create a higher resolution copy of it? What you can do is you can come up here to the menu and say send to image to image. That's going to come up. You'll see two copies of the same image. You can go down here and you can see upscaling. So upscale will say on 4x. It's going to have a static seed, so it's going to generate the exact same image. Click Invoke, and in just a moment here, you should have the exact same image, but at four times the resolution, so it'll just be much higher quality. You can pop that out in the viewer, and you can see here that it is indeed four times the resolution, and it looks much better. Now, as I said earlier, this doesn't just apply to women and animals. You can also do things like cars. So let's play around with this prompt a little bit. You can see we've got this, again, this kind of cyberpunk car. Let's load the prompt up. And it's a SW Punk synthwave paint splatters. These are trigger words. So if we go back over to the website, you can see that in the model there are trigger words. These trigger words change the aesthetic that it, it paints with. They change the aesthetic that it draws the images with. So you can see model shoot style. That's what we used for the last few. SW Punk, Synthwave, and Paint Splatters. These give it that more sort of neon, cyberpunk, futuristic video game vibe. And so if we go back, you can see that's exactly what we get here. It looks like Cyberpunk 2077. So when we invoke that, you should get that sort of stylized look there. And that's exactly what we get back. Now, what if we took off all three of those in the prompt and we just have the highly detailed futuristic concept car in elaborate cyberpunk city? So it's still going to be in a cyberpunk city, but it's not going to have that stylized look of those last couple. And you can see here that changed quite a bit. It's not so bright and neon anymore. Now, what if we take out cyberpunk and we just have elaborate city? And now when we render this, you should get back a vehicle in a more modern day or average city that you'd expect. And yes, this one still looks modern, but it's a nice concept car. And we can do that again just to see what we come back with one more time. And there you go. Pretty cool.
This one's pretty trippy. This is a landscape generated in the same image style. So you can look up here. Again, it has those trigger words that we saw earlier. So we can take those out. And then you can see a crazy alien landscape with giant glowing mushrooms and colorful moss growing. So if we take out those stylized options, let's see what it comes back with. And it's much more subdued. It's also a little bit more detailed. You can see a little bit more of the intricate lines and detail in here. What if we take out some of these others? So we'll say colorful moss and a little bit of the glowing mushrooms. And so we'll just have a crazy alien landscape. That's actually really cool. It's almost photorealistic and it's just something that looks very amazing. And what if we said a crazy landscape and we take off the word alien? See if we get something back that's a little bit more something you'd find on planet Earth. And now there you have almost a painting or a photograph of a landscape that you'd expect to see in a place like Colorado. As you can see, finding prompts online and using those as a starting point just to get the type of aesthetic that you want, and then removing little detail words here and there can help you really refine the results that you get out of Stable Diffusion and help you hone in on the look that you want to get for your own project. Now, most of you viewing this are not subscribed yet, so go ahead and hit like and subscribe. That lets me and YouTube know that I'm doing a good job here. Hit me up in the comments, let me know what you want to see me do next, and join my Discord so you can get other amazing prompt ideas just like this. We have a whole community that likes to share this type of stuff, and I'd love to see you over there. I appreciate all of you. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech. We'll see you next time.